Tesla stock is currently down 1.36% in overnight trading, according to good old Robin Hood. We need to get into what's going to be coming tomorrow morning, as well as some of the news that broke here in after hours that you need to know as a Tesla stock investor, but not even just a Tesla stock investor. If you're an investor in general, you need to hear this information. We're going to be going over some a couple of catalysts on the near term horizon within the next couple of days, next week or two that are going to be crucial to the markets and to Tesla. Let's get into it. First things first, let me know what you're drinking down below in the comment section. I think a day like today really calls for a margarita, and I don't think that is said lightly. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. And just if you guys were curious, this guy is the culprit of the Harry Mike earlier. But nonetheless, let's get into this situation, guys. Tesla stock continues to fall in overnight trading. Now, I could point the finger towards this article that is trying to include Elon Musk with some of the stuff that happened with Twitter and Trump. We'll go over it here just for a second, but I really don't think that is the biggest thing that is going on with Tesla. Apparently, a federal judge asked if Elon Musk was trying to cozy up to Trump during criminal probe. Now, I don't think this is having an effect on Tesla stock, but this news did come out right after the bell today at 4.13 p.m., and it's been updated a couple times, and long story short, Twitter did not want to give the uh, the data for Trump's account because it went against some of their policies. I think we've already heard about this, and again, I don't think this is the biggest thing affecting Tesla stock. The biggest thing affecting Tesla stock is actually China, and some of the catalysts that we have coming over the next couple of days. So what we heard from the Fed today, we'll start with what happened today, is the Fed minutes. This is basically a transcript of the last Fed meeting, and it provides us a little more clarity of what the Fed's thinking, why they did what they did. It always comes out two weeks after the Fed meeting, typically on a Wednesday. And what we heard was that we could get more rate hikes. It said, quote, with inflation still well above the committee's longer run goal and the labor market remaining tight, most participants continue to see significant upside risk to inflation, which could require further tightening of monetary policy, the meeting summary stated. So the markets were not expecting this. The markets have been fully expecting there to not be another rate hike. The Fed futures have not priced this in at all, and overall psychology around the Fed and rates has been last rate hike was the last one, and we're going to pause for a long time before we start to get rate cuts. And it looks like we might get more rate hikes. And the former Fed, one of the former Fed uh, governors, uh, Mr. Krosner, suggest that the Fed is not going to stop raising rates if the job market if the labor market remains strong so this is kind of one of those moments where you've we've gotten rate hike after rate hike after rate hike inflation has fallen from nine percent to three percent but that's not good enough the fed wants to see something break before they stop raising rates you almost have to or else you're going to be in a higher inflationary environment this happened in the 70s they got inflation down they, they started cutting rates because they thought everything was fine it had been a long time since we had seen inflation before the 70s and then they well stopped raising rates and what happened inflation soared higher than it previously was that's because you didn't break enough you didn't break enough uh things right or as many things as you needed to so you almost need to see a shallow recession or people go on unemployment or some of those job openings to come down before we get the fed actually committing to a pause and then cutting rates and that's not something the markets were expecting the markets were in this psychology that things are going fine that we could see the labor market remain tight and get inflation to come down and still get the fed to pause and then cut rates. Unfortunately, the Fed says they might need to keep hiking essentially until something breaks and until we get a major market crash, global event, until we get a real estate crash or just a lot of people losing their jobs, anything short of that is not going to be good enough for the Fed. This is obviously a big problem for the markets. 
But not even just that. The Hang Seng tumbled 2% currently and leads losses in Asia. This comes after Asian markets have been getting slapped around like, yeah, like I'm not even going to go there. Just getting destroyed. Okay, this is because China is not doing well. Most of the world is not doing well. And a lot of people were thinking that the U.S. might be a bright spot, that we actually might get a soft landing. The odds of a soft landing just dramatically went down today. And that's a big problem. But specifically what's happening with Tesla is, well, you have China not doing well. And now it looks like the U.S. is ultimately not going to do well before we get rate cuts aka the Fed needs something to break in America before rate cuts. So it's like two of Tesla's largest markets, well, are either going to the pooper or already in the pooper. Not a good outcome for Tesla. At least for Tesla stock, that is. In all reality, the stock is based on future expectations that Wall Street has for delivery growth and EPS growth, you're already expecting a very recessionary environment for Tesla. 27% delivery growth, 29% EPS growth in a year where Tesla is delivering a brand new product or two essentially brand new products, the Cybertruck and the refreshed Model 3 Highland. You're already expecting somewhat of a recessionary environment for Tesla stock. In other words, there's not high expectations for next year. So the lower Tesla does go, the bigger of a buying opportunity that becomes. And I'm honestly getting very excited with what's going on with Tesla because I'm greedy. I'm a long-term investor. I'm greedy. I'm going to buy every single share I can at the most heavily discounted price I can, and I will welcome that any day of the week. Now, if you want to come hedge your portfolio and come trade with us live in real time, so maybe if the markets do fall exponentially here from here or keep coming down, well, you can make some money. You can take that money you, you make and reinvest that back into Tesla or some of your, your other favorite stocks. That is always an option, and you should not be handcuffed by what is currently happening in the markets. If you'd like, link down below in the description of this video. Do you want to say Tesla to the moon? Yeah. Say Tesla to the moon. Tesla moon. What are you eating? Yeah. A ring pop? No, I'm sweating. All right, you want to go watch SpongeBob? No, I'm Tesla moon. Tesla to the moon. Okay, they heard you. You want to go watch SpongeBob? Tesla, well, well, we'll see Tesla go to the moon at some point. <laughs> now, as far as other things that are currently affecting the markets, I would like you guys to take a look at TLT. Now, this is an ETF that tracks the 20-year treasury. Uh, you can use TLT. You can use other ones. I like TLT because it's the one that's used the most, and it's the most commonly used uh, bond reference. But basically what you've seen with the bonds is bond prices have fallen, so bond yields have risen. The, the, the actual yield or, or amount you get paid out on a bond stays the same. So it, the yield actually fluctuates or the interest rate, the, the amount you get paid out, your return on investment goes higher or lower based on what happens with bond yield or with the actual bond price. So it works just like a dividend stock. If you bought you know, a $100 dividend stock at 5%, well, you got paid out $5 a year, and that's 5%. Well, if that dividend stock then drops to 50, well, then you get paid out 10%, and you'll make $10 a year. Pretty straightforward. It works just like a dividend stock. Well, what's been happening recently with the bonds is the entire time the markets have been falling, the bonds have been falling as well. This is what you've seen really ever since the end of 2021, 2022. 2022 specifically was the worst year in history for the bond market and the stock market. Put together, the returns were very bad because normally what happens is investors, if people are fearful about the stock market, they'll buy the bonds, vice versa. If, if, if there's you know a lot of fear out there in the world, then investors will buy the bonds and they will sell the stocks. That's in a nutshell how it works. Well, what you've seen last year was... Both bonds and stocks got destroyed because normally when the Fed is raising rates, they're raising rates with a good economy. 
usually the Fed is, is, is not raising rates during a slowdown. So if the Fed's raising rates, that means the economy can handle it. Stocks should do well. That's what you've seen throughout history. And that's why the 60-40 portfolio you guys have maybe heard about, 60% stocks, 40% bonds, did so poorly last year. Because what you've typically seen should not happen. That's because the economy is holding up and the Fed is raising rates. That means every time the Fed raises rates, it puts downside pressure on the bonds. So bond prices fall and the markets are very jittery and jumpy because we've never seen this many rate hikes and the economy and the labor market holding up the way it has. Now, let me summarize this for you and what's actually happening right now. Bond yields are rocketing higher. Your 10-year, your two-year, your whole entire curve. This does something interesting. So in the short term, it creates uh financing pressures what you need to pay to finance things becomes more expensive and that's a problem for companies especially companies that are heavily indebted or need financing to operate their business which tesla doesn't need financing to operate tesla but tesla does need financing for its customers or its customers i should say need financing to buy tesla's product so that's another factor that Every day you're getting these bond yields going higher, making your financing costs higher, your mortgage rates higher, your credit card rates higher. That is potentially bad news for Tesla. Now we know Tesla has the brand that can really withhold through anything. Tesla as a brand I think is, is the real power, whether it's solar, whether it's phones one day, whether it's cars today or whatever else it is in the future, Tesla is a brand. So I'm not worried about Tesla at all, but investors are are that's a problem now when the bond prices fall again remember this should not happen bond prices should not fall as the markets fall very rarely in history have you actually seen that besides 2022 and what you're seeing right now so what this does and you, this will make a lot of sense like with with the uh with the banks right Everything got destroyed last year. So what happened come March of 2023? Well, banks were insolvent because their bond portfolios had lost so much money because your bond prices went from, you know, during 2021 of 150 on TLT, well, down to the mid 80s. So basically, the problem is when bond yields go higher, it creates a more attractive investment opportunity in bonds. And that takes money out of stocks, but also for investors that need to own stocks or need to own bonds or whether it's a bank or whoever else, when bond prices fall, well, there's something called collateral, right? Bonds are seen as some of the safest collateral you can have. But when bonds make a move like this and are this volatile, then if you have bonds held up in collateral, maybe funding your stock portfolio or for funding a loan or whatever else is going on out there, well, if bonds continue to fall and yields continue to go higher, that means potentially some even margin calls start to take place. It's a little different in the bond world. It's, it's, it's not necessarily called a margin call, uh, but it, it does restrict liquidity and, uh, forces investors to kind of pull back. August and September are historically the two worst months out of the year anyways. So all of this is coming at a particularly bad time. Now, earnings. Home Depot earnings were okay. Target earnings were not so good. TJX earnings were good. And then we have Walmart earnings coming tomorrow morning. If Walmart gives us bad earnings, we have a big problem because Target is like your dis consumer discretionary kind of uh, shopping. Only about 20% of their actual revenue comes from groceries. Walmart's is a little bit higher than that, but Walmart is a much larger company. They, you know, they're the second largest employer in the US. They're huge. So Walmart earnings will be big for how is the consumer actually doing? Now, two of the biggest catalysts that we will have in the markets after tomorrow is going to be the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. This is in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It is held next week, August 24th through August 26th. Jackson Hole could be a massive event. 
Fed Jerome Powell is going to speak and basically outline what he is l expecting for economic policy, for the economy. A lot of things are going to be said. Now, why this is so interesting is, well, let's pull up the SPY. Well, Jackson Hole was back here around mid-August of 2022. After that, the markets fell for the preceding about mm, two months, and you ended up hitting the low in October of 2022. But Jackson Hole was basically the top of this bear market rally that we had seen at the time. And this is problematic because we don't know what Fed Jerome Powell is going to say. What we just heard from the minutes caught the markets off guard. So what is this creating for the next couple of days of trading? Massive uncertainty. I've mentioned this before, and I hope this sticks with you throughout your investing or trading lifetime. The markets can handle bad news. The markets cannot handle uncertainty. Nine times out of 10, the markets don't crash because we get bad news. The markets crash because there's uncertainty. And that's really what I would categorize all of this as. We don't know how bad the situation is going to get in China. We don't know how bad or, 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 or you know, terrible the economy needs to get in the U.S. before the Fed will raise rates. We don't know how deep a stock market or real estate crash will need to be in the U.S. before the Fed will actually pivot and start cutting rates and get feel accomplished enough to actually start doing so. We don't know how high rates are going to go. We don't know what's going to happen with NVIDIA earnings. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. And this puts us in a very volatile and potentially dangerous market. Even Yahoo Finance points it out. NVIDIA's earnings will be the AI hype cycle's biggest test. Now, if NVIDIA has good earnings and they can match their guidance that they put out, the last earnings they had and, and still come in line with $11 billion in revenue and do good, that's going to be good. That's going to be really good for the broader markets. If NVIDIA misses on earnings or or does not raise guidance for the following quarter, these are going to be problems because NVIDIA has had an effect on the entire market, not just NVIDIA, but everything has benefited from NVIDIA's earnings. That was basically the low after, after the banking crisis, right? After that, NVIDIA reported earnings and it's been off to the races. If they report bad earnings, we're going to have a major, major problem. And NVIDIA is going to be reporting earnings next week. I believe it's going to be on August 23rd. So the 23rd is going to fall on Wednesday right before Jackson Hole. So tomorrow, we're going to have Walmart earnings. That's going to be pre-market. By the time you guys wake up, stocks will be reacting to that. But we're also going to get, at 8.30 in the morning, initial jobless claims for August 12th. Apparently, the Fed needs to see the labor market weaken. So you want to see this number come in as high as possible. You're expecting 240,000. If this number comes in less than 240,000, that could be a problem. Keep in mind, some of the government jobs reports we get are pretty delayed, and this is accounting for just last week. So it's a little bit more concurrent, and we get a little bit better picture of kind of where the jobs report might be. Now, you're also going to get Philly business conditions, Philly Fed employment, Philly Fed CapEx index, Philly Fed prices paid, and Philly Fed new orders, as well as CB leading index month over month. All of that coming out at 8.30 in the morning. So that will also be uh, pretty important, as what if, especially if you get kind of big moves within this data. It's all things the markets will pay attention to, especially Philly Fed prices paid and Philly Fed new orders. Philly Fed prices paid is kind of like your inflation report, essentially, from the Philly Fed region, from Philadelphia uh, region, which, which is all kind of that area, uh, right? So you're expecting 10.1. Anything higher than that uh, is going to be a problem. It's been falling for a while, though. 
So if it does continue to fall, that could be uh, quite good. And then new orders are expected at negative 13.5, a little bit better than what you've seen last month at negative 15.9. Tomorrow at night, you're going to get the Japanese inflation rate. That could be uh, pretty important as well. Something else that I think is very important that we should pull out is on the S&P 500. The SPY index is a good way to track this. When you fall about 5% fund managers, and a lot of hedge funds, institutions, or, or even banks, or just money managers in general, like to hit the sell button when you fall about 5%, because that's a pretty clear sign you're going through a downturn, you're going through some kind of correction. So currently, we have fallen from the peak on the SPY about 4.14%. So if we get just another down day like what we've seen today, you're going to be approaching 5% down, and that can induce more of that psychological selling. That's where you can turn a couple days of downside into a 10% or larger correction. This is also something to pay attention to of do we bounce if we fall 5%. The 5% drop um, level is going to be right here at about uh, 436. You're currently trading at 439.55 on the SPY. So if you fall another $3 or so, that could start hitting some of those stop losses and you could start to see stop losses actually getting filled. And that could create more downside. Now, in conclusion, what do I think about Tesla stock and how am I thinking about this? Well, number one is obviously the estimates are too low. So the cheaper Tesla goes, the better buy it is for next year. That That's the bottom line to it. And, and the more money you're going to make, especially if you're a long-term investor. Now, if you're solely into trading this for the next couple of weeks, yeah, the stock could fall. That's for sure. That 220 level is going to be a major level of support. And that coincides with where the 100-day moving average currently is. That's at $219.94. If for whatever reason you hit that 5% sell-off on the S&P and a lot of stop orders start coming in and the sell-off just gets more extreme from there, well, that's uh, not going to be good for Tesla. Tesla tends to outperform on both sides to the S&P and the NASDAQ. If it's a good day for the NASDAQ and S&P, Tesla tends to do better. If it's a bad day for both of those indexes, Tesla tends to do worse. So I do expect an amplified move. Now, I wish I could say there's any definitive reason why Tesla is down, you know, one and a half percent here in overnight trading, it could be due to the Elon Twitter news, or maybe that induces a fine or, or, or something that could cause Elon to sell Tesla stock. See, that's kind of reaching. So that could be what the markets are reacting to. I don't think you should worry about that whatsoever. I think that has no precedence to Tesla's business or Elon selling stock. Now, the RSI is sitting at 31.45. Typically, when you get to this oversold level on the RSI, you do get a bounce. So odds are Tesla stock does bounce pretty soon. Odds are that Tesla stock does bounce around that oversold level on the RSI, which is likely around 220, which does, again, coincide with a 100-day moving average. But I think the real test for Tesla stock, and if we get larger downside from here, is really going to be NVIDIA earnings. NVIDIA earnings really lit up the entire markets. If you get a sell-off after NVIDIA earnings, well, that's gonna potentially push Tesla stock down even lower. But in the short term, I do expect a bounce, but then again, I do expect some pain. I think even if NVIDIA comes out and blows earnings out the water, which I'm sure they will do because they raised guidance so heavy last quarter, the markets wanna see another big guide up from nvidia that's what the markets are pricing in i don't think we get another huge you know four billion dollar guidance raise from nvidia so i think from that sense we're, we're kind of screwed for lack of a better word so that is going to go ahead and do it for this video apparently i have to go help my daughter hit the like button subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section enjoy whatever you're drinking on in this case again it's a margarita i think it is duly noted and deserved after this week that we're seeing. So that's going to do it. My name is Michael Tyler. Thank you for joining me here today on this very uh, interesting day, especially for Tesla. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.